I hate starting things because starting things is just awful and bad and horrible and nobody likes it anyway. I'm going to move the mic just a little bit closer. There we go. Right. Okay. So let's get this going then. Um, so hi, hello, welcome. Ideally, this will be the first video that I will have uploaded to my channel. And I'm not going to lie to you. I am wicked nervous for no reason, but I've, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna settle into this and get used to it and all that. So I spent most of the day, I'm not going to lie, writing up a sort of a script, I guess. It's not really a script. I've just sort of expanded on my um, bullet points that I've been taking for the past couple of months because I wanted my first video to, I wanted it to be a transition. I wanted to have a hard line drawn in the sand of this was before and now moving forward, this is after, um, especially after uh, <laughs> this year, 2021, you know, all the great things that happened. So I, I figured that I'd just do a little year review recap and then move on to posting things that more that that align more with uh, what I'm planning. I have I have I have a Google Doc open with my notes, and I I literally have the very first one. It's I had to strike it out because I realized that it was wrong. The very first one was talk about Unis Anas. Oh shit! Wait, no, that was last year. So. I think that sums up how well I've experienced and absorbed 21. Time sure goes. It, it sure goes, doesn't it? I have no idea how long this is gonna go, by the way. I know um, that I have this script in front of me. It's mostly uh, expanded bullet points, uh, and there's gonna have to be a lot of ums cut out because I'm still getting used to the idea of just talking to myself. Because I'm not really. I'm talking, I'm talking to, talking to you there, whoever you are. Hello, by the way. Hi, I'm uh, Mimicry. Good to, good to meet you. So 2021 started off with the last half of my externship at a veterinary clinic for college. Uh, and that was a really fun experience. I really enjoyed doing that. I got to meet a whole bunch of new people and learn a whole bunch of things. And everyone was very nice and very patient, which I really appreciated because I was <laughs> out of my mind and nervous the whole time. And I got to see and experience a bunch of just wacky things. The note here reads Raisin Dog. Um, so I'm going to tell you the story about probably, you know, uh, probably the most interesting experience I had. It was, it was in the middle. So, so picture this, right? It's a little, little nine pound dog, I think. We weighed him, he was nine pounds or so. Little nine pound terrier mix. And his owner said that he had gotten into some raisins. He was an emergency call. So we gave him a shot of a drug that would make him puke all the raisins back up. And this little dog, you're not really going to grasp how little this dog was, but he was very small. He, you, you <laughs> when he was done puking up raisins. We weighed him again, and he only weighed seven and a half pounds. The man, the man's, had consumed a pound and a half of raisins. I don't know who owns that many raisins in their home. I don't know why you would ever have over a pound and a half of raisins, but that's how many were in that dog. And one of the other techs started to count them to get a, an official numeric count on how many raisins this dog had eaten. But you, we figured that's a bit excessive. You, at, at, a, at a certain point, when do you just say he ate a pound and a half of raisins? How many does that is? I don't know. The world will never know. They're in the garbage and in a landfill somewhere, I'm sure. So that, that, that stretch, the externship stretched from December 2020 to March 21. And I was really bummed when the end came. Uh, I miss all the people there. I miss going. I miss helping out and all that. But it was a good experience and I'm glad that I had it. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I have my notes, right? I have them here and I'm looking at them. And all that is, there's like April title, bullet point under April. What the fuck even happened? I'm not sure. Me? I don't know. 
note taking me. Um, April happened. I'm sure something happened in April. Just don't know what it is. Um, so at the start of this year, um, I had three guinea pigs. Oliver, well, his full name is Ollivander, Scarlet, and Dumpling. Uh, Dumpling, I, I got Dumpling at my old job working at a pet store. Ollie and Scarlet were rescues. But Dumpling, while I was cutting her nails, she purred and I was done. I had to get her. Um, so that brought me from two to three. And the guinea pigs are relevant, I promise. Uh, so we, we being my family and I, we pulled up everything and moved from my home state where I've lived my entire life in early May. Uh, right around that time, Scarlet had a few months earlier been diagnosed with what is called satin guinea pig syndrome which basically is a genetic disease connected to the satin gene in guinea pigs. You know, in case that wasn't obvious. It, um, the gene makes their fur sort of golden, like have a golden shine to it, like satin, I assume. Uh, but it makes it hard for them to process calcium, so their bodies turn to their bones as a source of calcium, and it is eventually fatal. So to cut a lot of the story out, I found Scarlet in her cage while we were moving, while we were packing our things into the moving van. And she wasn't moving. It didn't look like she was breathing. And I thought, I thought that she was gone. I, <laughs> I immediately thought, oh crap, what do I do here? What do I do about this? So as I was holding her and as I was going to tell my mom and <laughs> figure out what the hell to do, um, she started to wake up. And so we called a few emergency vets. We found one that would take her and they warmed her up. They gave her fluids. They gave her pain meds. They gave us a prescription for pain meds. And they said that there wasn't a lot that they could do for her past what they had done. She was either going to recover from this or she wasn't. So we took her home. I kept her warm. I gave her water I had a little syringe and I was giving her water whenever I would offer it every few minutes. And if she looked like she was interested, I would give her as much as she wanted. I gave her her food and her favorite vegetables so that her gut wouldn't stop. And she pulled through in what was probably the longest two days of my life. But uh, she made it. She got better. She perked up. She was eating and drinking and moving as normal. <sighs> and so after that, we came, mo or we came moving day? Yeah, sure. We came to moving day, and when I tell you that our car was full, I mean it was full. My PC, my siblings' PC, my Oculus, their Oculus, the guinea pigs, our turtle, a five-gallon Home Depot bucket full of fish, full. Which meant, unfortunately, that I couldn't take my succulents that I had been collecting and growing and raising for a few years at that point. And to be quite honest, I really did not need that added stress on my life. But I managed to get them out onto our front porch, and I texted my friends who lived nearby that if they could take care of them, please to come and pick them up. Like, y'all, these plants were my children for the years that I had them. They would spend, like, every Sunday, once, once or twice a month, so not every Sunday at all, but once or twice a month, I would put them all in the bathtub, I'd fill up the bathtub a couple inches, and I'd just let them soak up all that water. They got the windowsill, they got all the sun. A few times I took them out into the sun sun when it was warm enough. Spoiled little plants. I, I managed to squeeze three of them into the car though. My little round cactus, I had duct taped into a cup holder. My Thanksgiving cactus was crammed in between suitcases. My Hawthornias, I don't remember exactly where they ended up, but it wasn't very stable seeing as halfway through they fell out the trunk and their pot broke in a hotel parking lot. But the three of them survived, they're doing well, uh, even though this house does not have any windowsills facing the appropriate direction. I move them in and out of the porch. <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it warms up in the day, I'll go put them out on the porch and then I'll bring them in at night. But that was rough. I've, um, like I said, I lived my whole life there and never knew anything else. So moving away from all of that, my friends, my hometown, it was rough, but um, obviously I made it through and no small part of that was knowing that once we were gone, once we were out, then I wouldn't have to see my father for about five or six years until he retires. And then probably have to see him a few times, but ideally I will be completely 
away from the switch. Bleh, tried to say scenario and situation at the same time, and it didn't work. Ideally, I'll be away from the scenario uh, when that happens, so I won't have to worry about him. Yeah, it, uh, it took us about three days to drive all the way here to where we are now, and that was all right. Very uneventful. Uh, we stopped at hotels. I slept a lot in the back seat. Listened to a lot of Black Veil Brides and Star Set. The... <laughs> No, they're a little vent. Um, <laughs> the guinea pigs normally stay in a big, big cage. Roughly the size of a twin-size bed big. But obviously they had to be put into carriers for the driving. So whenever we got to the hotels, we would pull around and we'd sneak them in through the side doors and set them up in the bathroom with towels down and their fleece down so that they didn't leave a mess. The the turtle, though, he was a bit harder. We ha We did have to bring him through the lobby once. That was an event. We we kind of had to go up to the person who was checking us in and said, "Hello, we have a gu we're not a guinea pig. We have a turtle. Uh, he he lives in this Tupperware, not really a Tupperware, more of a Rubbermaid, big big bin. He stays in here. Goodbye." And we would haul him up on the on the luggage carts into the room where he sat on the floor in his little tub. It was interesting. Um, June, eh, not really anything interesting happened in June. Not a lot really happened this year. It was mostly around the beginning and the end. That sort of happens when you move halfway through in the middle of a pandemic and don't really pick anything up. Eh. There was, though, a, a bit of a low uh, around the middle. The one year anniversary uh, confetti and streamers and party blowers. The one year anniversary of um, one of... I'm going to say it's one of the biggest um, betrayals of my life, and that is that is putting it a bit dramatically, but it sucked. Back in June of 2020, one of the creators that I had been watching since I was very small, all the way back in 2012-ish, he admitted to some pretty gnarly stuff, and and I, have a, I had a really hard time trying to figure out which word to use here. Um, he left feels too light. He died is too dramatic, so I figured that he disappeared would be the best word to use, though I'm not sure if you can disappear if no one's looking for you anyway. And that was really hard on me because it was like this this person that I had been looking up for, well, looking up to for all of this time, for coming on eight years then, the one that I saw so much of myself in, the one who just sort of created this sense of belonging for me when I was drifting by myself in a pretty a pretty dark place, honestly. Um, suddenly he was ripped away and all of my carefully built blocks came tumbling down. Really, in a way, um, had that happened or had it not, I would still, in a bit of a weird way, have him to thank forever building enough courage to sit down and start recording, even if now it sort of has a bittersweet tinge. I, I want my, my goal here, I don't know if I'll be able to manage it, but I want to be that person for somebody. I Obviously before everything came out, but uh, <laughs> um, I would, I, I want nothing more than to be that beacon in the dark that he was for me. To, to reach the point of being able to put a smile on somebody's face when they haven't in a while. Because I've, I've been there. I, I know how important that can be to have. But <laughs> yeah, that, that was June. So after that, we settled in to this house. This We're renting this house currently. It's a bit oddly shaped. There is a... There's two bathrooms that are connected via the shower. And... Really, the only adjectives I can use to describe the shower are haunted ice cream parlor. Just gives you that kind of vibe. So the house, the house is a bit odd. The Wi-Fi here sucks because it's very old and it's made out of bricks and Wi-Fi doesn't like bricks, apparently. But there was a horse in the field out back that I had to feed as part of our living here arrangement. So that pretty much made up for it. For a while, I had a desk constructed out of moving boxes full of my books because those were the only ones that wouldn't cave in at the top. Um, and it took a while to get my mattress off the floor and onto a box spring, but I did finally get to upgrade from a twin to a queen, so I'll consider that a fair trade. Man, it, it was nice to stretch out on that for the first time. Oh, 
Mwah, chef's kiss, very good. Sometime in the June, July, August period, it all it all kind of blended together. Uh, wake up, maybe go to the grocery store, sit around, hang around, not do a whole lot of anything. Um, three, three months kind of blended. But somewhere in there, I unpacked all of my witchcraft stuff. I finally got to rebuild my altar. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do and what I want to follow, but I am a practicing witch. I have a little altar set up, and at first, a few years ago, I thought I wanted to follow Odin and Loki and the Morrigan. Uh, they seem to all line up with what I was looking for and what I, um, what I, what I had been experiencing. Um, but then, no joke, I'm not kidding when I say this, I had a dream about Apollo, and then I started seeing his signs all over the place. I would see crows, crow crows, not, um, what are they called? What are they called? There's, there's, there's some bird, there's some black bird, not a crow, basically, not a crow. I started seeing crows, and I would see sunflowers all over the place, and I would be waking up at sunrise, and just watching out my window the sunrise, and so on and so forth. So I started to shift gears into the Greek pantheon away from Norse. Um, and with my current setup, he's... Dumpling is drinking water out of her bottle because she has no respect for when someone is trying to record. Um, I am sorry. I can't make her stop. Um, either way, currently Apollo is sharing altar space with a one for Aphrodite, uh, because honestly, I need some of that confident hot girl shit in my life. And it's pretty well. It's, um, it's a cute altar. I'm a fan of it. <laughs> I have to be honest here. Um, they each have their own candles. I have them on my desk instead of the altar. Really thirsty today. Um, so with that, I organized most of my things. I got my tarot decks in order. I put some of my stones out of their plain sacks that they had been in. My amethysts, my quartz, my rose quartz, my desert roses, etc. And then into nice glass jars that I could display. I got my candles all set out. I'm working on getting my herbs into jars and containers as well. It's coming along pretty nice. I'm, I'm happy with it so far. I found a really nice aloe plant at a farmer's market and pretty much insta-bought it. She is currently in the window on Aphrodite's side of the altar now. Thriving, by the way. Just want to flex a little bit. Thriving. Rolling back a little bit before we moved, I used to have somewhere around seven aquariums set up. Um, mostly with betas. I had uh, two 10 gallons with just betas. I have a 20 gallon. Currently, that's the only active tank right now. I had a 20 gallon with a beta and a herd of about a dozen Corydoras. That, that's grown. I think there's more like 20 of them in there now, maybe. They, they just keep having little ones and <laughs> they're thriving, I guess. They're having a good time. I'm glad they're uh, <laughs> doing that well. And then the rest of them were five gallon tanks with betas. Uh, I was a little obsessed in case that wasn't clear. I had seven fish tanks with beta fish in them. So nowadays it's uh, just the quarries in the 20. Sammy, my last beta, died a little while ago. Corydoras are probably not looking forward to another bucket road trip when we move into a permanent home earlier next year. Uh, I think early January we're moving again. The most exciting thing this year, I will say, uh, was September when my long distance boyfriend of four years came over to visit from Arizona across the across the damn country. This man has come to me to put it plainly and simply and not go too far into it. It was amazing. We went to the aquarium. We visited one of the local gold mines. We toured it. Uh, we panned for gems and got quite a, quite a good selection, if I may say so myself. He bought, or he brought, rather, uh, two of those huge promo boxes of magic cards from when they had the D&D crossover, and we opened those over the week. Uh, he let me keep a good amount of them, mostly the alternate art for some of the monsters, and I have a Bruno battle hammer. He still has yet to tell me if Jarlaxle was actually a card or if he just was hyping me up with that. We didn't pull one. If it is a card, and that makes me a little upset. Um, Scarlet passed while he was here. 
ever since she was first diagnosed, I sort of knew that I didn't have as long with her as I had the other two. But I always knew that I would wait until it was clear that she was ready to go. So when the morning came that she was turning down her favorite biscuits and fought me to not take the pain meds that she would, she would lunge for them. She loved that shit. Tasted good. I, I knew it was time. So we made an appointment for the next morning with the vet. Um, and I made her as comfortable as I could for the night. And she ended up passing away in my arms that evening. So to put it lightly, that sucked, but but she's not uncomfortable anymore. She is living it up, to, to put it away, living it up. Uh, shortly after that, we had to send my boyfriend home. I stole his shirt, and he thinks he's getting it back, and it's really funny. Starting November, uh, the foxes that live in the woods nearby started coming out into the field more often. And I still had some cat food, some dried cat food left over from when there was a stray roaming around. Uh, we found her owners, by the way. Happy ending there. I miss her. Very good cat. Uh, so I tossed a handful of the cat food out for them and the birds. Not enough for them to get dependent just once or twice a month or so since winter was coming in. And while I was doing that, I, I realized that I've never lived anywhere this wild before. And I know that it, that's a bit silly to say. Um, we're not even 10 minutes away from town proper and there is a high school across the street and down the hill. But there's a herd of deer that come through every evening. I've watched fawns grow this year. There's foxes and groundhogs, rabbits, crows, cardinals, bluebirds, some kind of thresh. I'm still trying to figure out. And I'm going to miss that when we move. We're moving into more of a suburby neighborhood. <laughs> just uh, just gonna keep going through the list. Nah, yeah, that's what we're doing. I unironically am reading the Fazbear Fright series. And yes, it is a bit cheesy and lame sometimes, but I'm genuinely enjoying them. I've not really been able to read much this year since all my books are packed away in storage, so they've been a nice comfort. Um, I got a few tarot books as well, and I'm trying to really hone in on learning all of them. Uh, so I stop needing to flip through the little booklet that comes with the deck every time I use them. <laughs> Near the end of November, a whole lot of friend drama happened. No specifics, but it was all incredibly dumb. And I'm still trying to figure out how it got to the point that it got to. The, the next bullet points is a pair of them. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Quote, prepping to go to Europe for the river cruise. End quote. And then the next line, quote, just kidding, there is a plague, end quote. So, yeah, we were planning on going on a river cruise. Uh, yeah, it turns out there's this weird global pandemic going on that um, Europe doesn't want us to come to Europe to go down the river in a cruise. It's a bit weird. That was November. December has been a roller coaster so far, and... I say that as I'm recording this, there is still a whole nother half to go. Yeehaw! We found a house, bought a house. We're moving in next month in January. The same old November drama reared its head again, resulting in that inciting friend cutting ties with the entire group and burning all the bridges behind them and then trying to turn around and justify themselves and blame us for everything. TLDR, shrug, dude. We're too old and life is too short to keep fighting someone to stop them from leaving when they clearly need to go. Whatever. Uh, it doesn't stop it from hurting, but all that's left is to pick up the remains and move forward. I started seeing a therapist again, and she encouraged me to start doing YouTube or Twitch, since that's something I've always dreamed of doing. So, here we are. And here we go. I hope you stick around and join me, but if not, that's alright. You do you, hon. 2022 is going to be a better year for me. Stay tuned.